Certainly the art is here for people to look at if they come, but in today's society of online videos, smartphones and ever more sophisticated entertainment, how can somewhere like this with silent pictures that don't move compete? I, I, I think very little, I mean of course I'm fanatical on the subject, I think very little can compete with the experience of art. Something you see on a television or a computer screen which then flashes and th then disappears, it, it, it's the equivalent of, of a relationship, you know, a video chat. You, you have a friend that you only know on the computer screen. There's, no, there, there's, there's nothing comparable to, to having a human relationship and a relationship with somebody on the screen. And to actually, what, I know when people see a reproduction of the Mona Lisa, or they see a photograph of the Mona Lisa, or they see the Mona Lisa on their, on their computer or, or, or in a movie, they will be mildly impressed. But when you're actually in the Louvre Museum and, and you see visitors from China and Japan and America and other countries lining up and looking at this extraordinary portrait, you, you realize that this, this, this work of art has a kind of aura. It, it has a kind of magical appeal that, 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 that you, you feel very often when, when you're confronted by a work of art that the artist is, is in dialogue, is saying something to you, saying, look, look, you know, I painted this for you, for you to be enjoyed. And, and that you can only have, I think, with the immediate art object, not, not with a replica of it or, or, or a, you know, a digital image of it. Now, now to the untrained eye, mm. this Delacroix mm. looks like an unfinished pencil drawing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's so special about it? Yes, I mean, draw, drawings are different from, from prints. I mean, first of all, a print is made in many different, uh, there are many copies, not copies, impressions made. A drawing is unique, but a drawing is not made to be exhibited. A drawing is what an artist makes for himself. He, he's copying something that he sees in the street, or he sees a painting and he does a, a drawing based on it. And uh, in, 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 until relatively recently, it, until relatively recently, prints cost more than drawings cost because a print can give you a very beautiful image by a famous artist and a drawing seems, seems somewhat unfinished. In recent years, however, the drawings market has now become very, very important and uh, the fact that each of these is unique and also that it shows the artist drawing immediately his, his first impressions. I mean, th there's a saying uh, uh, Delacroix said that that, that a good draftsman, a good, a good artist, should, should be able to draw a, a figure jumping from a building. And he should be able to draw the figure falling through the sky and have it on paper before the body hits the ground. But perhaps art in China has another challenge. If you search Chinese art market on the internet, you come up with dozens of stories about forgeries and so-called fake auctions. How much of a problem is this for the art market here? It, it, it is a major problem and, it, and it's always been a major problem. I mean, Durer's prints were so popular that they were imitated immediately and there are very good quality imitations of Durer. I mean, I notice in the, but, but in, in the West, the, the, the copies are listed as copies and the artists who copied them usually sign their names. They don't put Durer's initial on the print. Some do, that's fraud. But when, when, when copies after the Durer prints come up for auction, I mean, a, a, a Durer engraving of the Melancholia, one of his most famous prints, would probably sell for $100,000. But a copy made in the 16th century after the Melancholia could be bought for $2,000, which, which is still a good deal of money for a copy, but, but it's, 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 it's considered an act of homage from one artist to another, not, not, not a fake, not, not, not a reproduction. But I know in China, of course, this is a major problem. In, in, in China, which does not have a tradition of printmaking, it's the paintings that are, that are faked, or the porcelains that are faked, or, or the jades that are faked. Uh, I, I suppose if China had a, a, a long tradition of printmaking, perhaps we would have, as, as we have in Europe, also a tradition of copies made after original prints. 
But, but as I said, in the West, the, the, the print was something that was a kind of a precious souvenir of the artist. And, and if they were copied, it was usually copied out of friendship or as an act of homage, but, but certainly not for profit. But the technology for producing fake works is also improving. And it must make the job a lot harder for people, experts like yourself, to determine what's genuine and what has been produced artificially. What, what does the future hold in store? What, what can be done to fight against this worldwide plague? Well, this is, you, there, there's only one possible thing that can be done. You, you have to have experts. You have to, you, know, you have to have people who, when, when they look at a, at a print by Picasso, and they know that Picasso made this print on a certain kind of paper. We, we know exactly, every, every artwork, every etching uh, is, is catalogued, and we know this was on this kind of paper, that kind of paper. You hold it up to the light. If, if you hold a Durer print up to the light, you see a watermark, and the watermark comes from 15th century or 16th century, 17th century, 18th century. Uh, very often these prints have little collector's marks, and if it's a collector's mark from the 16th, 17th century, uh, we can usually guess that this is correct. It's probably possible to forge them, too, but it, it's really only experience. I mean, de Lacroix never saw the painting, he saw print. This is another reason that prints are important, is that artists rarely saw uh, paintings of, of the past, they saw prints reproducing them, and de Lacroix saw the print and drew the drawing based on the print but as, as very often happens, he turned the Rubens painting into a Delacroix drawing. If you put the drawing next to the painting, and we'll show in the exhibition, we'll have a photograph of the Rubens, we'll see that the Delacroix horses on paper look much more alive than the paintings that were in the Rubens painting. But the Rubens painting was done largely by Rubens' assistants. Famous artists had assistants who did all the work. The drawing is absolutely every bit of it Delacroix's hand. This is a very great rarity, and my own suspicion is that it's the single most important old master drawing in China. So you're in the process of preparing for the next exhibition here at the Sackler Museum, entitled From Jura to Picasso. What are some of the highlights that visitors might be able to see? We have a very fine collection of 18th century prints. Of, of the 18th century prints that we exhibited last year, I, I think we have every single major 18th century artist. We have Tiepolo and Goya, and we have Piranesi and Watteau and Fragonard and Chardin. Uh, th this was an exhibition which, when, when I saw it last year, I felt could have been held in any museum in the world and, and it, would, it, it would have held its own at, at the Metropolitan or the British Museum. For, for this year, we're doing the highlights, so we're, we're showing everything from, from Durer to, to Picasso. Uh, we, we have some, you know, as, as they say of, of the clothing designers, we have a lot of brand names. I can't wait to come. Professor Donald Stone, thank you so much. Oh, Dominic, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you.